Hello and welcome to the Weekly Outlook at XM.com. I'm Maria Bashardviz and joining me is Senior Investment Analyst Rafi Boyajian. We'll be taking a look at the week ahead. So Rafi, let's begin over in the U.S. where we'll get a slew of data over the next week, with the main ones being the Consumer Price Index on Tuesday and retail sales numbers on Thursday. What's this data likely to tell us about the U.S. recovery and how might it affect the dollar? So, Maria, although uh, we're seeing growing evidence that the U.S. recovery is going from strength to strength, the dollar has been on the retreat over the past week as Treasury yields have declined. Uh, But this this was probably a temporary pullback in yields. And should we start to see more upbeat data coming in, the dollar could easily reverse higher. Uh, So among the main data to watch next week uh, are the inflation and retail sales figures, as you mentioned there. So we are expecting the consumer price index to have uh, risen to 2.4% year on year in March. And this would make it the highest since January 2020. So definitely a sign there that inflation and pressures are picking up. Uh, And retail sales numbers, we did see a big drop in February after a jump in January. So we're expecting uh, another upward uh, bounce back uh, in March, so forecasts are for a 4.7% increase. So on the whole, we're expecting most of the data out of the US next week to be fairly robust, and this could potentially uh, significantly boost the US dollar. Okay, um, moving over to China now, we'll get the GDP report and retail sales figures on Friday. If China's growth indicators are strong, what will it mean for market sentiment and the China-sensitive Australian dollar? So China has seen the most V-shaped recovery out of all the major economies and we're expecting GDP growth to have accelerated even more uh, in the first quarter. Uh, so we're probably going to see a year, uh, year, year the annual growth hit double digits for the first time uh, in a decade. Uh, so this would, although this is probably down to the low base effect from 2020 when uh, this time last year the economy shrank uh, due to the the lockdown in China at the time. Uh, and once uh, this effect is uh, taken out of the calculations in the coming quarters, growth will probably will probably fall back. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's still, uh, it will still represent uh, that the Chinese recovery uh, is uh, remains on track and that should boost market sentiment. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, optimism is already running high uh, in in the markets, uh, and uh, we could see uh, risk sensitive currencies such as the Australian dollar uh, get quite a bit of a boost on the back uh, of the strong Chinese data. And of, we're also going to get Australian employment numbers as well next week on Thursday. So if that's all equally strong, uh, then there could be quite a bit of positive momentum coming uh, in the Aussie's way. Okay, turning to New Zealand now. Recent data has been a bit weak. What are we likely to hear from the RBNZ when it meets on Wednesday? And how might it impact the Kiwi? So we're not expecting any changes from the RBNZ RBNZ next week. uh, And could actually be a bit of a non-event given that we're not going to get a press conference and there's not going to be any new uh, economic forecasts. Uh, But we could potentially see some changes in the language in the statement because uh, New Zealand's recovery has suffered somewhat of a setback due to uh, we've had quite a number of mini lockdowns for Auckland, uh, New Zealand's largest uh, city. And of course, we've got those ongoing travel restrictions. So uh, there's still um, some headwinds for the New Zealand economy. uh, And we could potentially see the RBNZ sounding much more dovish in its uh, statement. Uh, And uh, we also had a a run of disappointing data, uh, as you mentioned there. So uh, the RBNZ uh, is uh, in a position to make much more of a convincing case uh, that uh, the interest rates, uh, the cash rate is not about to be hiked anytime soon. And this could hurt the Kiwi uh, in the near term. And finally, over in the UK, the British pound has come under some pressure lately. We'll get monthly readings on GDP on Tuesday. What should we expect there? So next week data is 
going to be for February, and this is when the UK was still uh, pretty much in lockdown. Uh, so we're not expecting great numbers, uh, but uh, there was probably a bit of a rebound in manufacturing output, and this may have boosted GDP. So we could, in fact, see a small uptick in GDP growth in February. But as far as the pound is concerned, it's not likely to do much in terms of um, boosting sentiment for sterling, because there's a huge worry right now about the UK's uh, vaccine rollout, uh, mainly down to the safety concerns surrounding the AstraZeneca jab. So the AstraZene AstraZeneca jab vaccine uh, is the UK's main supply of COVID uh, vaccines, uh, and the UK's regulator just uh, advised people below a certain age to avoid getting the AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, people in other age groups are now avoiding it due to those concerns. Uh, so we could see a significant slowdown uh, in the UK's vaccination program, and this could delay the reopening of the UK economy. So these concerns will probably continue to weigh on sterling for the foreseeable uh, future. Uh, so we're not expecting huge impact from the data. Rafi, thanks so much. And thanks for joining us at XM.com.